Hello YouTube, and uh, I got a bit of a gift for you guys today. I'm uh, actually leaving for Toronto today, so when you guys see this uh, video, I would have already been gone, but I wasn't able to get the mod pack done this weekend, so I'm actually going to need your guys' help with something. I'm going to release the mod pack in full beta, which means basically the way it sits right now, I'm going to release it and give everybody access to the beta server that me, Major Bucko, and a few others have been testing. So I need you guys to play the crap out of it, and I need you to comment and tell me any bugs you guys find and uh, any more suggestions for mods now don't bother saying curb inside or um, anything that uses a lot of RAM like full B9 aerospace because it's not going to happen uh, there's already limitations on the game but uh, I'm going to show you guys how to install the mod pack because there are a few people that still are asking me so uh, I'll show that and there's two graphic settings you guys are going to have to reduce in the game to make it stable so uh, and one more thing I'm going to need you guys all to do this one step if you want to keep using the server because KSP is actually about to get its update to version 1.1 and when that happens you won't be able to join the server anymore. But I'm going to show you to be how to run two versions of KSP on the same machine. So we'll start with that and then uh, I'll get into the mod pack. So you can open up your computer. Uh, it doesn't matter which version of Windows you're running. If you're running Mac, I have no idea how to do this, so don't ask me. Um, you're going to open up your local disk C and you're going to go to program files times 86 if you're on 32-bit it'll be program files although the mod pack won't work for you so there's no point um, let's go down to steam then you're going to go down to steam apps common and then you're going to find your kerbal space program folder now you're going to right click you're going to hit copy you're going to paste that onto your desktop not a shortcut you want the full folder now this will take you a few minutes i've already done it here but basically what this is going to do is it's going to copy everything from your Steam uh, right to here. And if you run it right from here versus your Steam shortcut, it'll actually run a separate instance of the game. This way you can run the War Server, or otherwise known as My Modded Server. And you can also run your own mods on a separate version. And you can do this as many times as you want. And another thing I found out, and I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but uh, if you have a brother or sister and you've paid for the game, if you copy that folder and put it onto their computer, they can still run the game. <laughs> uh, for some reason, it doesn't ask for Steam to be loaded. I don't know why, and they'll probably fix that in the next version. But uh, you can just run the game, so you guys can both play on the server uh, with that. Now, you, you should technically both buy the game, but if you've purchased it, that's good. Don't go putting it on friends' computers or anything stupid like that, because then you're going to get yourself in trouble. Um, I'm not a fan of cracked games, so I won't support it, but uh, that will work if you want to do it within your own household, as an example. If your brother's hogging Steam or something and you can't go on a game, then that's the other way to do it. So, okay, once this folder's here, open up game data. Now, I'm going to send you guys a link to the mod pack in the bottom of the description of this video. You're going to click it. Now, for me, it's in my Dropbox folder. And you'll see I have the original mod pack, which most people have now. And then I have the new mod pack. And I'll just move this over because it's loading up here. There we go. Sorry, I got two screens. Now, I'm going to show you the size difference. I know you can see that this one's only 300 megs, but these are actually compressed. It's actually close to 900 megabytes uncompressed. So this is the old mod pack and this is the new one so you can see there's quite a bit more stuff in there but uh, basically all you have to do is you take this game data folder you're gonna highlight all these mods you're gonna drag them over and you're gonna give it a little bit of time now for me it's still gonna take me a little while well I consider it to be a little while but uh, for you if you're not running an SSD this this is gonna take a lot longer but I mean I got a double liquid cooled computer so it will go a little bit faster but uh, here we go. Do 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 do. That uh, wasn't so bad. Uh, about 24 seconds. So okay. Now that that's done, you can do one of two things. You can either run the game directly from here, or you can do this. Now I'm going to show you guys how to make a separate shortcut, and we're going to paste the shortcut here first. We're going to rename it. I'm going to call it KSB modded. Now. We take that shortcut we're gonna put it here so now we have two KSPs we have our original from Steam and we have the one that we just copied to our desktop in this folder now this one's a modded one so sock it wherever you want but when you open up this one it's gonna open up that folder and when you open up this one it's gonna open up the original directory now by doing this um, it allows you to run both and this way whenever Steam updates your game um, it's not gonna affect the mods so we're gonna go ahead and open KSP for the first time and you guys can 
see how painfully slow it is. Um, the first time you load it up, it's going to take a little bit. I don't think it's going to take quite as long as last time, but uh, it's still going to take quite a bit. So here we go. You're going to hit no for this. You don't want it to check for updates. Um, I'll update it as I see fit. So what the hell? Oh, Windows 10. There we go. Do, 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 do. I'll probably cut this out. Okay, so it's taking me about three minutes to load now. Um, about to get into the main menu. You can see the module manager uh, was hard at work. Now, the first time it creates all this, it's why well, it takes quite a bit longer, but uh, afterwards it'll just load it from the cache, which is a lot faster. So here we go. Now, you guys won't have this right away. Um, you might have the old server, but in this, in this KSP, you won't be able to join the old one. Um, I'll give you guys the address for the beta one, but before that, you need to go to settings. Now, you're going to have to do this. Um, go to graphics. None of these settings matter except for a few. You have to disable this one, the SM3 train shaders. Um, you have to put your texture quality to half res. Everything else can be maxed out. Uh, fallback part shaders, leave it off. And the edge highlighting PPFX, this has to be off. This has to be at half. If they're not in those settings, um, your game will crash constantly. It, it's just something that happens. I don't know which mod causes it, but... Uh, um, we don't... Sorry about that. Alright, so... We don't know which mod causes that problem, but uh, it, the game doesn't look horrible like that anyway, as long as you keep your uh, everything else maxed out and your resolution up higher. Uh, that should be higher, but... Anyways, general. So, everything else is fine. Input, blah, blah, blah. There's one other thing. Max physics delta. Bring that down to three point zero three seconds. That'll help you with some... Uh, bigger ships and the max persistent debris um, I'm not really sure what this should be set to so I'm just gonna leave it on unlimited for that but uh, here we go let's hit apply accept okay now what you guys are gonna do is you guys are gonna hit add now for name just call it raging geek server or modded server it doesn't matter for the address you're gonna put uh, I'll show you real quick I'm gonna edit that now, for me, I have my internal address. Um, I probably shouldn't show you this, but anyways, it's going to be gamingforthewind.ddns.net. I think I put that as this one. Yeah, gamingforthewind.ddns.net, and the port's going to be 6704. Ignore that. It's going to be 6704. And what's going to happen is once you've entered that in, uh, shit. You're going to hit add server, and then what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to connect. If you get any sort of mod validation error here, it means you have mods installed that uh, the server doesn't want. You cannot have any other mods. You This is only with the mod pack. It's not going to work any other way. And we're going to go ahead and warp this to morning. But, uh, yeah, now that you're in the server, uh, you'll have your normal functions everywhere. And why the hell is this taking so long? There we go. Okay. Well, let's turn DMP off. So, anyways, you get your B9 stuff here, your procedural parts. You don't have to worry about that. You can do that when you're building stuff. Uh, Kerbal Foundries, you can mess around with this. It doesn't really matter. Okay. This is something that is, like, the bane of my existence. Kerbal Construct settings. Now, there are buildings already set to this. Now, with Kerbal Construct, we've added one more base. I'll just show you where it is real quick. I'm not sure if I can see it in this. Yes, it's over here. So you can't really see that the base is there on the map, but it, it is there. So I just have a ship there. That's why you can see it. It's over here. We have that one and that one. That way we have more launch points. This is super buggy. If you're constantly crashing in this base, just don't go to it. <laughs> That's all I can say for now. I'm not 100% sure if that is going to completely make it out of uh, uh, beta. Uh, we're trying to squeeze out the bugs, but we can't uh, get them all. It's being a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. Is this for remote tech? Yes, it is. Now, one of the mods is uh, very picky. is actually going to be remote tech. And if, for those of you who are familiar with remote tech, probes no longer work unless they have a connection to the KSC. You have to have a connection there. Um, if you don't, well, it's just not going to work flat out. Here's Jewel. We have our new planets, which is Sarnus, which is our Saturn, uh, Uranus, and uh, Neptune. And then, of course, we have Pluto. <laughs> but uh, if you can get to Sarnus and its moons, I will be impressed. Because some people can't even make it to Jewel. If you can get to Erlum 
and get a proper decent orbit around it, I will also be impressed. It's got a really messed up inclination. If you can get all the way out to Neon, um, yeah, I'll, you can have it because I'm not going to be going out that far. It's too far. I might go to Plock with like a small craft or something, but there's no way in hell I can send a probe out that far. I mean, it doesn't look that far from here, but let me just show you how far that is. Some people have a hard time going to just Duna or Eve, okay? Jewel is hard for most people. If you calculate the distance between the sun and Jewel, it's about the same distance <laughs> as that added on to this, okay? The easiest way I can think of would be to drop your orbit down around the sun or, or go around Duna, make it so you gravity sling back around the sun, make it so you fling back out into an orbit, and then you wait till you're in roughly a good encounter. Or you gravity sling around Duna, project yourself outwards, which will put you about here, and hope that you can get it at the right angle. But, I mean, the angle is so hard to, to do it. Like, that's why I'm just, I'm looking at that, and I'm I'm pretty confident I can get the Sarnus quite easily. <laughs> I could probably build a monstrosity of a rocket to do it, but uh, to Erlum, that's going to be a bit more uh, more challenging. For those of you who haven't seen the other video, I'll just show it to you real quick. Uh, it's basically like Jewel. Um, it's got a really cool moon, though. If we go over to this moon here, this is something I'd like to uh, plant my feet on. So, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's not liquid. Yeah, that's not liquid. But it'd be neat. I'm not sure if any others had got that added. Yeah, this one's pretty cool, too. But uh, it'd be neat just to be next to a gas giant like that. That'd be pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, done showing off some features. Um, I'll go into the other screen just for those of you still watching. Most of you have probably already downloaded the mod and probably are already on the server by the time I'm talking about this. But, uh, yeah, we have our tons and tons and tons of parts. Uh, my favorite is going to be the Argon tanks for our plasma thrusters. Yes, that's right. We got plasma thrusters. So, uh, yeah, we have all sorts of new ion engines, but uh, these are going to be your tickets uh, <laughs> to, uh, to the outer solar system. But look at the electric charge, 2,000 per second, okay? And it uses quite a bit of liquid hydrogen. Like, that's just insane. <laughs> so, don't know how we're really going to power that, because I don't really think we have... Big, oh, I hate how that glitches like that. If anybody could tell me how to fix that, would be awesome. But, uh, hmm. 3,500, that's not a lot. We have our storage chunks. Obviously, we have our tank treads, the new stuff. Huh. Anyways, I'm done blabbing for now. But uh, the whole point of this video is just to kind of show you guys how to install the mods and uh, what I expect of everybody. Um, it's going to take about a week or two for it to leave uh, its like official beta for this. But uh, basically, I need you guys to tell me what mods work for you and what don't. If you, uh, first thing I'm going to ask you is, did you change those graphic settings? If you don't change those graphic settings, then I can't help you. You're you're going to crash. I've already tested it. I've been testing this thing for two weeks. It just doesn't work. It doesn't matter how big of a PC you have. It just doesn't work. Um, it looks like crap in this screen, but when you go into the normal screen, it looks just fine. So uh, yeah. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, any suggestions? Um, I'm open to suggestions. Don't be butthurt if I don't allow your mod that you want into the game because it has to play nice with the others. And just because it play nice in your single player doesn't mean it'll play nice in multiplayer. So that's something to be aware of. But uh, some of you will notice that the BD Armory is actually two versions old for the small bug fixes and whatnot. And that's because it's a special modified version of BD Armory that has better uh, hooks. Which basically means when you're doing dogfights and stuff, it works much better. <laughs> It's still not perfect. It's better when you do uh, air-to-ground attacks or ground-to-air, but uh, there's still a few glitches with that. But it's it's definitely much better from the previous version, so that's one thing I'm definitely happy about. So, uh, yeah. All right, I think I'm officially done now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the rest of my videos, and uh, check out Lord Buttersteak and Major Bucko's channels. They're both awesome people, and they deserve a lot more subs. And uh, don't forget to check the description for the mod pack and the server link. If you have any questions, shoot me a quick comment. And uh, any suggestions, also shoot me a quick comment, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. And one final thing, leaving for Toronto. So won't be back till the end of the week, probably Friday, but I can still answer your guys' message if you leave one um but until then i will not be on the server because i won't be at home so yep anyways have a good one